Hello everybody and a very warm welcome back to Tony Northeastern and another episode of Emmerdale Farm. Oops, I mean Snoopdown Farm. Right, so in this week's video we want to concentrate on this area here. There's a couple of ideas I want to use. Um, I think I might have mentioned it in the comments. But yes, yeah, so what I'll do is I'll have a quick measure up and see what we can um, physically fit into this small space which measures roughly about eight inches that way and probably nine and a half to ten inches across here so there's enough room there for a couple of small buildings um, in this area here I like to probably fit a pigsty and this area here probably a barn hay barn with hay bales and um, farmers vehicles so let's just see how we get on first of all right so before we start we uh, normally have a look around the internet and see what photographs we can find and uh, I like this one um, I know there's one at Beamish where they have a, a wall down the middle and they have two openings one either side so I'm going to use this as the basis for the one that I want uh, to build. Note the gate on the outside so that might um, play a key part in what I'm trying to do. So yeah I'm going to use this one as uh, an idea so basically yeah I like the shape of that it's got pitch roof um, I'm not I'm not going to bother with having uh, this outbuilding here but what I might do is raise it up slightly so we can have a door on the side for mucking out and that sort of thing. So yeah, so that's the idea I have in mind for the pigsty. And now we're looking at a prototypical hay barn. Um, now I like this because of the, the curved roof. I, I like that, but if you drive up and down the motorways, you can normally see them with um, a corrugated side on and along the front as well and back so yeah this is giving me the idea of how I want to do the hay barn um, obviously the hay bales will go on one side and I'll have some farm, farm up vehicles that will go on the other side but yeah it won't be as big as that uh, I might just incorporate the uh, six stanchions one two three the side and three back but I'll have a cross framework which will then be covered with um, steel sheeting as it were so yeah that's given me a, a prototypical example to go by as with the farmer's house uh, I created a footprint so basically I just wanted to see where and how much room I've got for a pig style without making it look overcrowded so we've got a little little guy here so this is giving me an idea of how I want to do this so basically I want to split this piece of card into two so we've got two pens um, I want to roughly create this like that so we got a little bit of room for outside the pen and a little bit of room inside the pen um, so there'll be a door here possibly and another door on that side because I would imagine they'd want to keep the males and the females apart um, something like that so it's just what I've seen so yeah so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to split this into two and um, well there'll be a gate there and uh, imagine and then again a gate here. As with so any builds that I have done in the past, we always start with the doors and windows. So this is what I'm doing at the moment. Um, I've already cut the doors, as you can see. I've used one mil plastic card. Um, I've prescribed it and I've marked out roughly where the handle's going to go. And these are slightly smaller doors than normal. They're only nine mil wide by. 21 millimeters in height uh, I'd imagine that they'd have to keep them small just enough room to allow 
the farmer or the farmhand to go in. Um, otherwise, if they were too wide, there's a good chance that the the pig <laughs> might escape. Uh, that's my theory. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what I'm doing now. I'm just making up the doors. Right, so this is what the doors look like finished um, with the framework around. And these are the little pen doors like we saw in the photograph. So I've done, described it on one side and then on the other side I've just took, uh, glued a couple of battens on. Because you'll see both sides of this door once it's finished. So we shall paint these and then we'll um, continue with the walls. We have now cut some of the walls um, for the pig sty. Uh, the two side walls, the uh, middle wall and the back wall, and the intermediate wall. Um, as you can see, it's, it's not a very big building. Um, it's probably one of the smallest buildings um, I've done. But um, what I'm doing now is I'm marking out for the stonework. So obviously this is where the, the pigs are allowed to roam free, as it were. And I'm um, just pressing hard with this pen. Uh, just random as you like stones. No bigger than um, four mil square uh, but the rat rectangles all various sizes but once this is painted it'll just look like random slabs. So I know in the photograph you had brick. You could do brick if you wanted to but uh, I think random slabs is it's probably the better option, I think, but uh, we shall see once it's all painted up. And here's the first coat. Uh, it looks pretty gross at the moment. I'm using a Satin 163, um, but while it's wet, I might just go over with a little bit of light grey and try and um, lighten it up a little bit because it does look too dark. But uh, we shall see. I'll add, I'll add a bit of light grey just to um, tone it down a little bit. So I'm using satin again and it's 126 this time. It's a, a slightly lighter grey. But uh, what I'll do is I'll just dip it in the paint and rub it on the towel so I don't con cross contaminate the two colours so I'll just do that put it on a little bit of tissue and then just use what I've got on the tissue let's see what, how this goes I'm just using a little bit of light grey oh that's better but I'm only putting it uh, in the centre and Just uh, leaving the dark grey around the edges of the. And I'm not even going to bother wiping it off. I'm just going to leave it as it is, I think. And I'll just go over with some black weathering powders later on. a little bit better. Might need a, a little bit more grease. So I'll clean the brush off a little bit. Yeah, I quite like that. That's a lot better. So yeah, I'm quite happy with that. So we'll let that dry and then we'll get back onto concentrating on the walls. I have now glued the doors into the two side walls. So now we can start um, gluing this building together. Um, there is a few walls still missing, but this will just give me a general idea of where everything 
is going to sit in relation to the base. So if you can imagine, yeah, I think that will look pretty good, I think. So I've just got to check to make sure that the walls are in line with the base. If not, we can always trim a fraction off. Now, as in the um, farmhouse, we still have a white um, card edge, but uh, we can cover that up. So, yeah, the reason why we're doing it like this is just to make the building portable so I can lift it off the layout for cleaning or, or whatever. So, yeah, so that is almost ready to glue onto the base. So, so I've glued the first two walls on and um, remember what I'm always saying about the overlap on the, on the card so it's just so I could hide that edge so once that edge goes into there that should hide the card edge and you should end up with a reasonably neat joint to finish off Like so. Now, we still see a uh, card edge, but that little edge there I'll paint grey. And as for the rest of it, just another row of bricks. I'll just cut three bricks and just go along that edge to hide the card. But yeah, it's, it's coming together. It's only a tiny building. <laughs> So moving on a little bit, um, all the walls are done and all the doors are fitted and uh, as you can see I've added the brick arches on both sides just to add that a little extra detail and it uh, looks like one of our little friends have moved, has moved in already. So the next thing is to do the roof and to cap off uh, these walls here to hide the card and then uh, so what I'm doing now is I'm just adding the Metcalf brick edging on the edges of these walls now you can't buy this edging anymore uh, which is a shame because it's ideal for little jobs like this where you want to hide the edges of card um, let me show you what this edging looks like. If you're lucky enough to find any of these older packs of brick card, this is what you're looking for. It's these edges here. In 2019, Medcalf changed the design of their brick sheets and um, they don't include the edges or the brick arches anymore, which is a shame. Because all you have to do is just roll it onto a skewer stick to form the radius and then just glue it in place. This piece is just going to go across there and uh, yeah. And that's that, that finishes that off nicely. So I'll just run a little bit of this glue across this edge. And we'll just drop that in place and just let the glue do its job. And then we end up with a neat finish like this. So what I'm doing now is I'm cutting some of this um, brick sheet um, to go around the lower edge and hide the card. So I'm just trimming this off to the edge of the cement there and just putting the rule back on the third brick up from this edge. So we have a strip of three bricks which is more than enough to hide the card um, like I've done here already. See, this is the, the card edge I'm talking about. We're just hiding that. And then what I'll do then is I'll just go around 
and touch up this card here to match the stonework inside. And uh, it don't look too bad actually, it looks like it's meant to be. And then obviously I'll just weather these edges with some um, powder paints. Right, as you can see I have um, added the roof in the usual way where I've scribed the card and now uh, it's painted it. So I'm just um, painting this um, flashing underneath the roof and then we can um, add the little pigs to the build. So yeah, we're almost there. Um, it's not a bad little <laughs> build in this. Um, it's amazing how much space this takes up on, on the baseboard as you'll see. But uh, I think I have made the right decision making it a, a double pen rather than uh, the single pen like we saw in the photograph earlier. So I'll just uh, finish this off and then we'll um, see what it looks like on the layout. One last detail before we add this pigsty to the layout. I'm just painting uh, the underside of the pigs, give them that really uh, filthy look, so to speak, uh, using Satin 163. So I'm just rubbing uh, the, this paint off it's underneath the belly of the pig, um, just to, you know, because. Uh, not the cleanest of animals, so it just gives them that look that they've been stuck in a pen. And there you go, some just like that. You see, just highlights a few details on the actual um, animals. And we can just super glue him, or her, yep, it's a her, <laughs> into the head. All right, so we've got the males on one side and the females the other. We'll dab a super glue on the feet. And then we shall put her in there. And now I'm just giving the lower edges of the brickwork a black wash um, and on the slabs as well. As you can see there. So I'll just wipe off the excess along the top. And I've already done this side already. As you can see. So yeah, it just adds to the grimy look. Um, yeah. Right, so I've placed the pigsty onto the layout and I'm just trying to work out where it would look best um, because there's not a lot of space here or here to try and get uh, another building in. I'm look, looking to get a barn in so I'm just uh, working out where it would be best and what would give us the most room to put this barn in because the barn is going to house uh, a couple of uh, farm vehicles and some hay bales so yeah. So Coming back to the pigsty, as you can see I've um, highlighted the tiles by using some black wash and the black 
gouache has gone right into the detailing of the tiles and really brought the, the tiles out as it were. And I've hidden the card uh, as well, the, the white card that uh, goes around the base of the building as well, just using about the same wash. And I've weathered the brick balls down a little bit as well. So that kind of finishes off the pig style. And uh, yeah, it looks quite good. And uh, I think um, these guys would be quite happy living in there, I think. <laughs> yeah, so that's that job done. So the next thing is to concentrate on this barn I've been talking about. Um, so yeah, I think we've got enough space there. But that will be in another video. So I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen and uh, maybe you'd like to have a go at making one of these yourself. All you need is a photograph. Anyway thanks again for all your suggestions um, in the comments. Uh, I do like reading them and uh, hopefully we'll keep uh, some of your suggestions in my back pocket and uh, use them on the very last video of building this farm once I've done all the other major builds so yeah so thanks again for watching and we'll see you again next time bye for now bye